How are you? Good. I guess this is my job. Tammy, I'm going to give it to you in a second. Uh, I'd like to call the public meeting to order the Westfield School Committee Building, School Building Committee. How about that? Um, on our agenda, item number two is public participation. So I don't see any limits here. Normally we'd have, we'd have some limits. So I, you know, should I make them up or kind of just let it go? I'm going to let it go. Anybody who'd like to speak to the committee, feel free to do so. I'm going to guess that Mr. Skomsky has provided microphone service right up here. Yes, sir. And our, our folks behind the camera are right in behind them. And if anybody would like to address the committee, feel right behind you. But I don't need a microphone. Okay. Do we need to do a roll call vote? Of I don't know. That's a great attendees. question. Why did you do that? <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm off no. kilter here. <laughs> exactly. See, my school department, my, <laughs> Tammy, my school department folks would normally have, because they have to take me by the hand through these oh, things, okay. of all the attendants, but it's not here, so. <laughs> it's step by step instructions. <laughs> okay, I will modify that for you. Do you want me to just do it? Um, we'll have City go ahead and take the There you call. go, City, go ahead. Michael McCain. Yes. Stefan Zaporowski. Yes, here. Shannon Barry. Here. Chris Carey. Ray Diaz. Here. Ralph Piggy. Here. Brian Perret. <laughs> Shelley Haslett. Bridget Matthews Payne. Here. Bill Parks. Brian Sullivan. Here. Cindy Sullivan. Tammy Tuck. Yep. Chris here. Tolpa. Here. Lisa Benoit. <laughs> Susan Darcy. Here. Well, now that that's open. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's off. You want the floor first? Okay, yeah. so I'm Holly Robbins, and um, I was talking to um, Bridget a couple months ago, and I said, you know, what's going on with my school? Mm -hmm. And uh, she goes, oh, you know, we're talking. And she says, well, maybe you'd like to come to a meeting, and um, you could probably tell um, people a little bit about the school when it was first built. And um, so I was, I can't believe, I used to be the youngest person in the room, but now, nowadays I'm like the oldest person, so I don't know how that happened, but I, what was the first um, person, first class to go into the kindergarten? And I've always had a, a, a strong affection for the kindergarten. It's really stayed in my mind all my life, and. Um, because of the way it was situated, and I think the kindergartners at five years old felt very special with the architect and what was done in the school, which you, you can't see now. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, I do believe, although I don't, I can't prove it, but I do believe that the architect that um, built the kindergarten uh, knew about feng shui. And for those of you who, you know, um, don't know about feng shui, it's an ancient Chinese um, way of situating rooms and bringing good luck and, and ha having a balance of um, your chi, your nature, and your surroundings. And some of the elements of uh, feng shui are uh, fire, water, metal, uh, earth. And um, so, so at some point in my life, I got a job at Westfield State University. And, um, we could go to the schools and we could donate our time reading to the kindergarten. And I just thought, well, this is going to be something I'm going to do because I just, I just love that, that classroom. And so I ended up um, donating books and reading the books. And yeah, I had a really good rapport with the kindergarten teacher. It was a wonderful experience. But uh, the inside of the school had changed because of progress, you know, needing whatever they needed at the time. But what I thought was interesting was the kids were really interested when I said to them, did you know you had a fish pond in, in this little building here? And they would look at me and, and I would walk them around and say, where do you think it was? And so when you walked in, the, I think this side door, not the side that faces Franklin Avenue, Franklin Street, but when you walked in that door, um, there was a fireplace. And um, that was really great because we all got to sit around the fireplace. I mean, this was better than a lot of our homes, you know, this kindergarten. It was just so wonderful to, to have a fireplace. And then we had a pond with, with uh, goldfish, and it was built in. And you can kind of see see the structure when you walk in the front of this building. 
the architect put another pond and then we walked in the front of this building. And there was, it's all covered up, but they would go over and I would show them, see it sticks out a little bit, and, and then they got that. And then there was plants and there was a sandbox. Because back then, you know, it's a lot different now. So when I, when I went there um, to read and everything, the sandbox was a computer um, section. And I just said, oh yeah, that's progress and everything. But mostly things were gone, but it, it was really a wonderful experience at the time. And um, so then I kept doing that for a while. And then um, Tim McDowell uh, had a conversation with him because he was going to tear down the fireplace. And of course I was horrified because my dream was when I won the lottery, I would add on to the kindergarten and I would put everything back the way it was and the kids would enjoy, you know, things from 1953 as well as, you know, the things that are, that we have to keep up with. Um, he told me he needed the room and um, I, I was just like, oh well, you know, and I just kind of forgot about it. But So I just, I guess my, I'm not trying to get to any real point, but just so that you know that I, I've always wondered if history and architecture and the history of Westfield being as old as it, as it is, and what works back in 1953, does it really matter now? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really sure if it does matter that, you know, we incorporate elements that are from the earth and, you know, balance. I'm not sure what we do in the classroom anymore, but I just wanted you to know that that was um, a, a really good experience um, for me and my classmates. And just so you know that, um, so it always, I just want you to know, it all stayed with me, in other words. And when I got the job at the college, I was there for over 27 years, and one of the jobs I had just before I left was in the old sand home <coughs> building. And there was this big, huge lobby, and it was kind of dumpy. And I thought, what can I do to make this more welcoming for the people that come here? Because people would be lost, there'd be admissions, um, students would be lost, whatever. So I incorporated um, all the elements of feng shui, in my lobby, I had a sandbox on top of my. I had a desk that went like you know high up, and I had a sandbox on top of that. And there was a water feature, and we made it look like a water feature. And I had nice plants brought in, and I made it look like my kindergarten again. And everybody, and then I had a big screen TV, and I had in the winter I had a fireplace going in the TV in the screen. And in the spring, I'd have flowers and birds and everything. And the teachers that were teaching in the classroom, they would come up and they'd say, oh, this is so wonderful <coughs> to just sit here after teaching. And I just thought, why did I, why did I do this? And I think it was because of my <laughs> experience in the kindergarten here. And it ended up, you know, being a, and then people would have a bad day and they would come at my desk and they would write in the sand. And, um, take a break and things like that. So I just think my experience here at Franklin Avenue was such a wonderful experience. Um, but I know we have to get into the 21st century and we have to do things, but I just wanted to share that with you. And I, I wish there would be a water element or something in the architecture or something to make people feel relaxed um, when they come in like it used to be on the front door. And um, I don't know if that would work, but uh, we used to actually have a cafeteria and a gymnasium um, back then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Okay, that's all. Yeah, no, but that's so nice. It's, it's special, for sure. I can tell you we're not going to have fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, it was never lit. I don't <laughs> So let me take a second and step back a second. Cindy um, always has me fairly well prepared. 
And I didn't realize that there actually is a script underneath all of the stuff submitted by Dan. So thank you very much for that. I want to recognize in the room is Dan Pallotta and Burke Gardner. Dan is from B333 Inc. And, and I don't know where Burke where is from, can you? Um, uh, I just want to note that, that they're in the room. And we do have an honorary uh, committee member that hasn't actually been, indu been inducted yet. And that's uh, Connor Tuff. Connor, thank you for being here. <laughs> You've been on a lot of these, bud, sorry. So, you've been to as many of them as I have, so I figured we're going to be in this together. Anybody else for public participation? Saying none. Uh, summary of community correspondence. None. That was easy. Uh, motion to approve the school uh, budget meeting minutes. School committee budget meeting minutes. So, uh, moved. March 22nd. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Update from owner's project manager and design. <coughs> mm, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. May I distribute a budget? What a fun. I love budgets. Especially <laughs> <laughs> reinstated. Thank you, sir. So, there's extras. Ray, Dan Ray. Ray, I skipped you. Yeah. 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 Go on. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need me? <laughs> and Dan, you have one more. Do you have one more? Can you give it to school committee member Kathy Hillman, who is also Thank in you. attendance today? I'll give you the extra. Okay. Her, her have friends that we're looking like for. Out yeah. of the so, it's a public document now that I've handed it out, so it doesn't matter. So, um, what I'd like to uh, explain briefly is that at every meeting going forward, we would like to go through the budget quickly. Uh, in the next few months, it won't be very big changes, um, but I wanted you to see uh, where you were financially, what you've committed to, and what you have left. Um, the most important thing is that your original $900,000 appropriation, we only spent $623,588, which is spectacular. Mm -hmm. And the Commonwealth gave us $444,247 in matching funds. So we've gone as far as we've gone up to uh, the PFA uh, for a relatively small amount of money, and that's something that you should all be proud of. Uh, the budget is broken down into the four major categories, orange being uh, pretty much everything that's not covered by the contractor, the designer, and the OPM. Um, you'll see this column called MSBA codes. What you guys don't see is that every single penny gets audited by the school building authority uh, in Boston, and it's our responsibility to prepare those. Uh, we've, requ we've so far requested five, uh, call they're called pro-pay submissions, and they're in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, we'll, we'll update that as time goes on. Uh, each month, we submit a pro-pay submission. Uh, I, I cannot submit another pro-pay submission until the PFA is fully executed uh, by the city and uh, the executive director of the uh, MSBA. So, um, do you know when that's coming, Dan? I don't. Okay. Um, I know that we've executed our side. Yep. Uh, you and I have gone back and forth a couple of times with them. It is not uncommon for the MSBA to uh, be slow on paperwork. So, uh, they're great on paying, though, but they're slow on paperwork. So, well, I just wanted to let you know where that is. Um, so the total project is no longer 62,159,139. If you go to the actual budget, it is now 61,882,727. Uh, and that includes the feasibility study that we spent. But the feasibility sp study that we did not spend, we can't keep for the construction, all right? Because the way that the order was written back in the day, uh, it was for design only. It's not for design and construction. So. That money will be rescinded by the council at some future date. That's it for budget. Any questions on the budget through the mayor? 
How much do we have left over in that, that uh, initial expenditure? $276,412. Thank you. And Matt will we'll be working on a rescinding that bond. We are waiting for the final stuff to come yep. in from that. Yep. Okay. I understand. Dan, what about, um, I know that I'm starting to see building prices of uh, materials come down. And we're going to experience any of that as part of this. Do you think? So, um, are we too far into it already? <laughs> We, we, we won't know exactly where the costs are until we get our bids in. Uh, we're going to keep doing estimates. Uh, we have three three more estimates to do. Three more. Uh, so we're, we're, we're just capturing the costs at each phase. Uh, we've completed the design development phase through all the meetings we've had. It's, I think the only last little thing is to determine what we're doing with that corner tower, uh, which uh, is a choice of the building committee. Uh, and then the uh, estimate packages are going to the two estimators, and we expect to be submitting around May 1st. Or um, the submittal for the design development will go in early June. Early but June. But we'll get our estimates back in mid December. So, mid, I mean, mid, 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 mid May. Yeah. Mid December, <laughs> mid May. <laughs> mid, <laughs> mid May. So, and there's time built in in case we have to look to value engineer based on what comes back with pricing. It's possible we could get in earlier. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we don't really know. Um, I can tell you that. Some costs are up, some costs are down. So, you know, we just bid a uh, public safety facility for the little town of Williamsburg, and the smaller projects are harder to do than the bigger projects. And it came in a little high, but it didn't come in so high that it caused anybody to have hard work. So I, I, I'm expecting that we're going to be pretty close to target. Our problem that we have from now till uh, the bidding is is what we call project creep, and, that, and project creep is uh, Chris. Topa unleashed uh, <coughs> in the classroom, ha adding this, adding that, and you know. We deducted this. <laughs> we deducted this. was very good. good. <laughs> we got it. I was not. I'm obviously kidding when I say Chris, but for example, uh, in the last month we've met uh, three times with uh, uh, Mark Pizzotti with the uh, Department of Public Works, uh, two times with fire and police. Uh, to try and figure out the best manner to mitigate the traffic that this building is going to cause. So we are no longer a single neighborhood school, we're two neighborhood schools, but we still have the same infrastructure that we're dealing with. And it's possible that we might need a light. Um, we'll know that in the next couple of weeks, but a light costs between three hundred and five hundred thousand. So if I save five hundred thousand in construction, it's going to go to red, yellow, and green. So, uh, so these are the type of things that we're trying to balance as we're walking our way through. Obviously, we won't be doing anything with a uh, ratification by this body, but when we're ready to present it to this body, we will, you know, show you what what is needed, why it's needed, and let you make the decision. It is not a requirement to have a light. It's it's just a question of whether it will have. Uh, a, a much safer uh, entry and delivery during the half hour of drop off and pick up. Okay, that's it for budget. So, I got one more thing. Fire Mr. away, Dad. Mayor Wallenbach. is yours. I appreciate it. Uh, we need some, we need some uh, advisors. I don't want to call them subcommittees because they're not going to report to this committee. Uh, otherwise, they'd be subject to the open meeting law. They're going to report to the designer. Um, and one of them is colors. Uh, the architect's going to go through a whole bunch of various colors. We're going to need three volunteers for colors. I'm not asking for them right now. I want you to sleep on it, talk to your partners, and decide whether you want to put the time in on the color committee. We're also going to need three members for FF&E. FF&E is furniture, and that is a time-consuming one, too. Uh, it kicks in right about when the colors have, are, are picked because it ties into colors. We're going to need three people for playgrounds. Right, wrong, or indifferent, you have two playgrounds here that you have so many choices to do. Uh, I think you'd be shocked to see what's out in the marketplace today. And this landscape engineer wants to give you what you think will be best for your residents in your neighborhood. And lastly, um, this one is, uh, is a tough one. It's the pre-qualification committee for bidding, and that's a true committee because it's posted. Uh, and that'll be uh, five members. One member has to be the OPM, myself, 
uh, my designee, one member has to be the designer or his designee, and three other members, one of which has to be the procurement agent. <laughs> so it's you, Tammy. So Tammy has already volunteered. <laughs> And we need two more, and it's a lot of work. We, we expect to get about 135 s packages to, 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 to review. Probably five general contractors or six general contractors, but every sub-trade has three or four that have to be reviewed. And if they are not up to the standard uh, that we believe would do quality work, we will have a way to disqualify them and not allow them to, to bid. So uh, that pre-qualification is important, it's tedious. Uh, we'll probably be starting to work on that, I'm guessing, in about two months. So you have four committees to which all of you may volunteer for. You can be on as many committees as you'd like. If you'd send... Uh, and it can only be committee members? Or it, there's nobody outside in the community representing us? Uh, I would advise it to be the committee members because the committee is the legal responsible entity for this and I've just never seen it done with okay. outside committee just members, right? So For all of them or just the pre-qualification committee? For all of them. It's a lot of work. You got, I, I didn't volunteer for this committee. <laughs> so, that is all I have for today, uh, Mr. Mayor, and I appreciate you giving me the floor. Dan, so for the committees, <clears throat> if you want to send me anybody that wants to volunteer for any of the committees, and I mean, come on, prequal, that is the best committee on this whole list, hands down. Got it. <laughs> want to read prequels with me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just send me your name, and um, you know, if we get more than three, you know, that that becomes a blue. No one's going to get bumped off. But um, so color, FFNE, playground, and prequel. Okay. I say we volunteer Brian for prequel. He's not here. See? Done. <laughs> I two more. All those in favor? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that that's all we have. On the OPM side. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's roll to it. All right. So I just, um, nothing to vote on, nothing to really look at. I do have a slide presentation, which just shows some follow-up images that we did since the last building committee, but I'll get to those in a minute. Um, just some highlights since our last me meeting. Um, the school committee, we had previously, with the um, schematic design submission, identified proprietary items that were going to be in the, in the construction package, and the school committee did meet, and they've approved all of them. A few things were added since schematic design that were flushed out during design development that we know the city wants. So um, those were included uh, in the language when the school committee voted on at the end of March, I think March 31st meeting. Do we have solar panels going on this side of the school building? <laughs> we have. Um, we did take the solarium for this room. Yeah. Is that better to see? Brian, this is the cool side of the building. So uh, obviously, the veterans knew coming in. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is the cool side. So there's a limited 3D package for the building, and it's um, really just to power the steam classroom so that the students can kind of see what the, the solar process is. And they are on that side of the building. So. Uh, cool. <laughs> um, also, since we met last, uh, a group of you went to East Hampton to take a tour of the, the school that's there, and really not, not to um, say that that's what this, this body's looking for. It's really not what this, this committee's looking for. But a lot of materials are, are there that you could actually see when I talk about flooring materials or wall materials. Um, you could have actually seen how they look in a real building. So uh, that's, that was the purpose of that tour. Several people came, so that was, that was good. I did bring some samples that are lined up against the window there. Um, if people aren't too hot afterwards, I'll stick around if they want to kind of take a look. But they're, again, not to make selections, but just to kind of show you when we talk about a beige brick or, or a brown brick, all the way at the far end, I know that we've talked about the, the synthetic stone, the last two kind of square panels there are what that material is. And so it's kind of organized from exterior materials down into the building with some flooring things. So. Did you take them to the orange one? No, I did. Oh, yeah. Brian did. Yeah. Brian. Four souls. So <laughs> we had to break in. I mean, we, don't, we don't like <laughs> had to let ourselves in. Yeah, we don't. We don't. Like. So you know why I didn't go? I couldn't do that twice. Because he's been there before. <laughs> I've been there. So. I, after seeing that orange one, I'm like those poor children. <laughs> <coughs> so 
So anyways, we have um, in the design development package, because it's out for cost estimating right now, we made some assumptions based just on the feedback that we've gotten over the last year or so. Um, and what I'm going to do is our office will kind of summarize what the materials that we chose for the different finishes are. And at that point, we'll ask for a vote to see if people like that or not. We can show you the samples again so you can look at it more closely. And once we've got those, we'll start putting together some storyboards with, with color schemes after we've had a chance to meet with that advisory panel as well. So, and ultimately what will come here is probably one or two color scheme options for the committee to approve. Um, we did submit our cost estimate set. It went in Monday this week. Uh, it was scheduled for Friday, but uh, we were just late getting some of the stuff from our consultants in and the estimators weren't gonna do anything Friday night through the weekend anyways. So that went out first thing Monday morning. Um, and we're expecting them back, I think, on May 11th. Um, and then we've got until the 13th, I think, is what we tentatively got for the reconciliation meeting. And we'll decide if we need to do VE or if we can start packaging the submission for MSBA a little early. Um, a couple things that happened in design development. Uh, the classrooms uh, for accessibility barrier free uh, code, you're required to have a voiceless sy lift system for hearing impaired students. It's not needed in every classroom because you won't have hearing impaired students in every classroom. So we've taken that out of the construction project, which if it was part of construction, would have had to be in every classroom to make sure it was available when needed and put that into the um, FF&E package. So that's a cost savings measure that um, has kind of come about through the de design development process. Um, we also took the clocks um, out of the construction project. They're going to be FF&E and there's a, a clock system that the city uses already that's battery and it ties back to a central location. Um, just so that all the clocks read the same in the building. Um, <coughs> that, that's huge. <laughs> we don't have that currently where all the clocks are the same. Uh, yeah, most, most yeah, schools don't, so don't feel bad, <laughs> unless it's brand new. So I think it's a good move actually taking that into the technology package because the city's got stock uh, um, of these clocks from their other buildings in the district. Right. So well, if something does go wrong. The, the problem with the built-in clock systems are 20 years from now, you're not going to be able to get the parts for them. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, where the wireless ones you can replace the clock. And, and the fact that the wireless ones talk to the, the main, main, main clock, they do all keep the same time. It's a lot different based on technology. Is it, is it digital? It's analog because analog. it's elementary school. We, um, our office can't just kind it. of. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. I have grandkids and they're like, what are, you, what, right. are, what are you telling me, Grandma? And that's that's why we put them in the elementary schools, because we want them to learn but, but <laughs> how to read them. But it's outdated now. It's outdated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, watch. It's, 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 outdated. it's an equipment piece, so the city can, can revisit it. But that's that's typically what we do in schools is analog, because kids should learn to tell time. Well, you can volunteer for the FFN community <laughs> and change it to digital. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on the so, so just a couple updates from the last meeting. Uh, we were asked what the price would be to go from a natural seeded grass field to a synthetic turf field, and we talked to our estimators about that, and we came back at about a million dollars for that upgrade if we wanted to That's consider. That's Ralph's request. <laughs> uh, was that the softball field and the, and the uh, soccer field both? Yes. Okay, so and and we'll we're looking at as a 10-year lifespan. Mm -hmm. per year. It, it really works out about the same yeah. if you if you do a life cycle cost analysis on those. I didn't want to give you a number when you asked last time because um, right. the market is so so volatile right now and I wanted to get it from our cost estimate rather than guess and give you bad information. But it really is your, your annual maintenance on a, a natural grass field um, over 10 years comes out to about the same, but what you don't have is um, you budget that in as opposed to, well, you can budget the 10 year cost in too, but it's a much larger capital cost for the city at, at 10 years to redo your field if it's synthetic. And nobody saves, nobody makes an account and saves 100,000 a year in preparation. Oh, yeah, I know. All of a sudden, bang. What do you mean? It's a brand new field. I wish. Well, the superintendent does, but he's not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, when would we have to decide that? Uh, it's not a reimbursable anyhow, so you can decide yeah. that at any point in time between but now and big day. Yeah, but hold on. So that wasn't part of the cost, so if that's an additional, we may have to actually go get a reappropriation on the bond. So we're over the bonds? We're because ready. Matt was very specific on how the bond read. So we can only borrow what the MSBA won't reimburse, if I remember correctly, and it was based on... Yeah, so it may just, if that's the will of the committee or the or the city as a whole, mm -hmm. I believe that might have to go back to council. Okay. 
We, we would like to know sometime before 90 percent just so that we can get it into the documents and make sure things are coordinated and not kind of last minute and miss something. So. I don't think we're going to make this decision should be sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Is there anything holding us up on making the decision tonight? Mine? Because I've got to be honest with you, from my viewpoint, I don't think anybody has the appetite to eat another million dollars. If I were looking at this from the taxpayer's perspective and I looked at the escalating costs, how it turned mm -hmm. out, and I'm not knocking any part of this process. When Matt Barnes set the, the bond at what he set the bond at, it was at this threshold number. Adding another million dollars to it, I don't think anybody really has a great appetite for it. Ralph, I'm with you. I understand what, what turf fields do, but. I'd like to comment on that because I think that if we're gonna spend money on a turf field, it should be at the high school level where they are always in use. And nothing against Parks and Rec and whoever might use it. I'm not saying the high school can't use it, but I, I think that that's where it belongs. I'm concerned with the traffic signal because that is if that's if after the traffic studies and Mark and his traffic people look at it and we need a traffic signal that could be upwards over five hundred thousand dollars for that. So, you know. Well, and I'd like to say that I prefer a traffic signal over turf fields. So it's an idea, it's a dream, it's a wish list item. I don't think it's practical at this point to go forward with that. So I would support the grass as long as it's got a, a maintenance budget attached to it. Yeah. The line item budget. I, I agree with Chris in regard to this. It may not be something we vote on now, but the story has to be told that we had the discussion so that when the discussion comes up at the high school that we're trying to do that and have for years, that people understand we attempted to look at it here. Didn't go here. Too much money here, but it needs to go up there. So that subject, that conversation needs to carry on with you guys that will make your decisions later to, to where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So well, I guess that well, takes care of the okay. turf field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just say Here's your decision. I would go with the grass. Okay. And I don't know that you need to vote because we're no, not changing. It's anything. not in there. Right. It wasn't there to begin with. So um, the other thing that we were asked to do, and uh, people on the committee at least should have a handout. This is a handout. I got it. Yeah, no, I got it. Um, I and they're up on the screen too. It was just a was just a, um, a third option that we hadn't explored, which is a flat roof at the corner of the library and a gable roof coming on the canopy entrance into the building. And so those are the two lower images, and the two at the top with a gable roof at the tower on the corner of the library and at the, and at the um, thing. Again, we're not necessarily looking for a, a, a decision today, um, but it's something that if the, because it goes, it's in the estimate right now with the gable roofs, which is the more expensive option. So that can also be a VE thing, and it can be something that the committee just has a preference one way or the other. We can always pull it out without hurting our budget. When he says VE, you all know what that means. Value engineering, right? Sorry. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> oh, I'd like to comment mm -hmm. um, because I brought it to both um, Franklin Avenue and Avenue Gibbs. Um, there were. Just two different, three, four different designs with, a, with the yeah. circle, you know, the circle window, so on, and expand um, to this. But I will say that the top design with the gable roof and the square window um, was a 16 out of 19 teachers at Franklin preferred that. Um, the, the other three were the circle, the same kind of architecture with the circle window. And that after it was 13 out of 16 that preferred the top design with, and the other three with the circle window. The bottom design, which was a flat roof. It was flat and flat. Was, yeah, it was mm -hmm. flat and flat with a gable in the middle, um, received no votes. So I just, I want to bring up because the voices of the teachers just need to be heard. And so we obviously are trying to give you what the community wants, but when we get the estimate, if the estimate needs a place to chop, I can assure you it's going to be at the top of that corner. So I will say, <laughs> stop with the chopping. <laughs> call those reductions, not cuts. <laughs> Oh, chops. <laughs> He's going to go on chopping. There's no reduction. We're just chopping off. Burr, thank you for doing this because I think that the flat and the flat before was that, that 
Oh, she's uh, fine. Yeah. Right, yes. And this one, I think, at least gives us a little bit more of an entrance. Mm -hmm. So if, <clears throat> if during value engineering, you know, we find that that is more expensive, and we, we know that that is going to be more expensive, mm -hmm. At least now we can see what a flat with a pitched right. entrance would look like. So thank you for doing that. And we're still going with all the round windows, right, Dan? Every of single course, every window is round. Except for the triangles. <laughs> Except for the triangles. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're going to teach the kids shapes. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. So you'll be the first school system that does not want to teach a clock, but you want to teach shapes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the round one, make it a clock. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Can I bring us back just a bit? Didn't the last time we meet, didn't we talk about a consensus on 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B? Yep. And wasn't the overwhelming consensus 1A with the... Yes, so right? that's what they've carried in design, right. development which, for estimating. Which is the match to what Frank yes. and Yes, and and yes. yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, so we need to continue to revisit this, or are we good with it? I'm no, not being... I think he was just showing, I had asked for, just in case, I wanted people to be able to see what the possibility could be if, during value engineering, that pitched roof was a little bit too expensive for us to um, I, to carry. I also believe that when we did 1A and 1B, 1B didn't have the gable on the entrance. No, it did not. So it was flat all the way across mm -hmm. Maya, yeah, so yeah. you had no definition yeah. of entrance. Well, there was a gable above right. I, I the, the flat roof. So yeah, it was, kind of a, it was not yeah, as common. That's when we asked the question about the runoff of the gutters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So. Do we know what the difference of the two is? No, the, the things are out being priced now, so I'll have I'll have a better idea once we get our estimates back. I can dig into that, find out what it is. Mm -hmm. Six. Bert, are you good? I'm just about to, I was just going to tell people our next steps are to continue our coordination for the DD submission in June. Um, we need to get the certified minutes from the school committee. Um, for the proprietary items, and then uh, we're just going to reconcile the things, look if there's any value engineering necessary, and we'll make our submission in June. And that's everything. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Bert. Tammy, I think we're on any items not reasonably anticipated in 48 hours. I think we are too. Because now that I'm actually reading my script, I'm not going to deviate from it. Soon. <laughs> Is there anything that uh, anybody has any comments that haven't been heard yet? Saying none. Is there another motion? Motion to oh, adjourn. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Are you reading the script? <laughs> <laughs> I tried yeah, to raise my hand yeah. when you were doing your thing. Yeah, good. You didn't look my way. Before you do the motion. I can't to see you, by the way, in the <laughs> sun. <laughs> yeah. So um, the only thing I want to say is we recognize, and we want you to understand, we recognize these meetings are quick, and there's a lot of not a lot of meat in these meetings. The hardest part is the is the actual design and the layout of the building. As we get more and more into this, it becomes more and more technical where the hinges go and things like that. We're not going to call a meeting and have you come out and tell us if you like three hinges or four hinges or something like that. So we don't want you to feel slighted when these meetings go quick. Uh, but we want to hear from you if you're not happy with something. So uh, you know. Sometimes we can be overbearing, uh, as you know. <laughs> well, you said that, I didn't. <laughs> but um, we, we do listen. We honestly do listen. And we're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to finish the task, which you know, just got $237,000 uh, uh, less, less today. Thank you. Next meeting is May 11th at 5. So I'd like to announce the next meeting is uh, May 11th at 5. If you could put that on your calendars, because I'm a little remiss in doing that on that's occasion. Okay. So um, I'm now looped in, though, right? So that's good. Uh, are, are we rotating so location? That's what I was just So we can rotate if you'd like to go to Abner for the next sure. meeting. Um, which uh, is Pete mm -hmm. set up in Abner? Is what? They don't need to be televised. Okay. So right. I'm just um, saying, I don't think he's got the equipment. Yeah, they don't need to be televised. That's well, how you guys have a touch view. Yeah. Oh, but okay. if we can get away without a touch. Yeah. Today, we, 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 can, we can provide, now that we're in person, we can provide printing material. Yeah. Right. Right. And if there's ever anything that needs a screen that um, we don't have one available, we yeah. can bring one from the office. There's two events that are going on that same night, Grin Spoon Awards and the NHS no, Banquet, that will probably take some people out of the mix. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan.
So, so we can look I'm and see what needs to be on the agenda, and we may just go ahead and skip. But I think the the last meeting we had set that it was the second Wednesday, Wednesday. of every month. Correct. Right. Just for these schedules. Yeah. 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 So. But we can talk. If there's nothing that needs to be on, we can skip May and go into. Right. Right. And if there is, you'll still have a quorum, even if, yep. we, even if we are out. Yeah. We're going to have the estimates, though, right? Right around the they have the right that we should still. Yeah. Could we just, which just remain because of the, because of the, you know, uh, Greenspoon Award? So, so I'll have, or, let me just look at the. Or if I could suggest, if you're going to switch it a week in May, push it towards the end, and maybe we can um, approve the submission at the same time. Okay. That's okay. going in. So let's so look at that. Basically, the first yep. week in June. Okay. So I'll look <laughs> at the schedule. Good idea, Bart. <laughs> now we can entertain. Uh, do I a motion to adjourn? Is <laughs> there a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So don't forget there's building material over here if you guys want to take a look at it. Uh, let's see. Yes, sir. I made this in the house. prices are going to Yes, I do. 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 Y